Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate your uh, the opportunity to be here, and it's always great to to be with each and every one of you. Um, and the Omer is something that I uh, have a deep affinity with. Uh, I see it as an important opportunity for uh, an introspective check in about how I'm relating to the world, uh, and I'm always amazed as to the different things that. Uh, break open during the Omer. Uh, even things that I think are not in the moment particularly good turn out to be important. So with that, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about Teferet uh, Benetzak. Uh, it is, Teferet is uh, the bell itself and it's also about yearning. And this is, and yearning is not the same as longing. Longing usually has some kind of an ache uh, to it, a uh, missing. Uh, it, it's, it, and sometimes it can be even eating away at us, where yearning is connected to our desire. And therefore, is, from my experience of it, is it's pulling me towards something. And it's never a uh, a straight path, and I, I'm thinking of a picture that one of my students went, wrote of uh, her idea of what her path would be to a particular place, and it was fairly, you know, forward going and with different hills and a few valleys, and what she and then she drew a picture of how she actually got there, which was lots of swirls and lots of detours and lots of going backwards and going forward. And yet she still made it to the end. And part of what was pulling her is that yearning. And when yearning meets endurance and in, in meets that that energy of holding us it also works to pull us to where we're going and so i'm going to start the meditation or continue the meditation since we've already started with a short story that i learned from uh tony k bambara many years ago of blessed memory and it's about a brook now i know that's kind of strange to have a story about a brook and i'm asking you to hang in there with me so it's about a brook and the brook was out in the forest doing what brooks do, just kind of meandering through the forest, going the path of least resistance to wherever it, it needed to go to get more water or to water something, but just, you know, like I said, meandering. And then as it was re meandering one day and it actually was meeting up with uh, some other little streams, it suddenly had this picture of something big and that was also watery. And soon the word ocean came and it knew it had to find the ocean. So it started speeding up, which of course caught the attention of all the animals in the forest, but they, cause they couldn't figure out why the brook was speeding up. And after some period of time of watching it, a rabbit came along and said, I don't know where you're going, but if you don't mind my helping you out, I can, I, I'm happy to dig a hole uh, underneath the, fo the forest and so that you can get to the other side of it. And it was an important moment that the, the rabbit showed up because the brook had come up against a very dense part of the forest and it would try to go in one direction, but it couldn't find an opening and it went in another direction and couldn't find an opening and it kept going back and forth. And so the rabbit decided it was, would dig a hole and invited the brook to come in after it. And of course the brook was asked not to drown it, which it didn't. And soon it got to the other side, the rabbit got to the other side and the brook was right behind it and it opened into this beautiful meadow. And the brook was very happy to be in this beautiful meadow with all the flowers and all the greenery and there was sky above. And then it came to the end of the meadow and it was something that was very hot. And every time it touched it, it lost something of itself. And it tried to stay on the side of the, of the meadow, but it could only go so far before it, it also touched something else that was hot. And then the wind came along and said, I have no idea where you're going, but uh, what you're trying to cross the desert. And if you don't mind my uh, changing you a little bit, I can, I, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, with the help of the sun, we're, I, we can get you to the other side of this. So the sun evaporated the, 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 the brook and it became very light 
and the wind came up underneath it and carried it across the, the desert. And it was like really enjoying the view from up there because there were all these things they couldn't see and it could even kind of get, begin to imagine where it came from. And then it, be, it was beginning to feel a little heavy and it hit, um, uh, hit something and it kept clunking against it. And it would roll in one direction and couldn't get very far. And it would roll in the other direction and, and couldn't get very far. And so the wind said, clearly you need a little more help. Let me get up underneath you. So the wind came up underneath it and pushed it up and up and up and up. And soon it could see the ocean. And just as it saw the ocean, it was moved forward by the wind and it came down a mountain and joined a waterfall and was into the mouth of a river before it knew it and on its way to meet the ocean. The moral of the story is, if you're willing to be vulnerable and go through a few changes and are clear about where you're going, the universe will help you get there. And this also works in, things, in terms of things that we're trying to move out of ourselves, coming to terms with loss and grief. This is a wonderful time to really notice that dance as well that the, um, the, the, the getting to the point where we can actually begin to see the sparks of joy. Uh, and, uh, and <laughs> which is an interesting thing for me to say in light of the joy and relief I felt yesterday after the verdict um, uh, 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 against the uh, murderer of George Floyd. So I, um, but I still wanna hold that because there's still a lot of sorrow, even as there's celebration and no victory is too small. So whether it's about in being in search of a different victory or in search of um, a sati a, some satisfaction for our yearning and not sure how to get there, th I invite you now to take a few breaths with me. My practice is to invite you to breathe four in, pause and four out, we'll do that uh, three times on the third time, and I'll remind you of this, you don't have to remember. When you exhale, I invite you to make whatever sound that you, um, you would like to release into the room or into the outside if you're lucky enough to be outside. And so uh, if you still need to settle again in your chair, this is a time to do that. And relax your shoulders. And, and we begin with the breath. And one, two, three, four. And four, three, two, one. And one, two, three, four, and four, three, two, one. And just a reminder, when we get to the uh, a release of this next breath, I won't be counting. I invite you to allow whatever sound will come out and chances are I'm gonna be making sound. And one, two, three, four, oh. You might feel a little ache somewhere in your body, in your shoulders or in your arms or in your neck. You know, just check them, make sure they're comfortable as a circle of energy comes down over you and there's nothing for you to do. Just notice any tightness and breathe into it. You might feel some pulsing in the back of your head or in the front of your head, in your chest. You may be more aware of your arms. As it moves down your face, 
a little tingling around your throat, the upper part of your chest, the back of your neck. Let it absorb any excess energy in your shoulders. As it continues to move down your back and down your torso, rolls down your arms into your elbows and to your forearms. Let it sit in your belly and it attend to whatever healing needs there as it goes down your back or over your hips and down your thighs, meeting your knees, you notice your feet have scrunched themselves under your chair, walk them out. As the energy goes down your calves and your shins to your ankle, feeling your feet and just release it to go down. Don't worry if you live on at the top of a building and there's other people around, it won't hurt anybody. Just release it. And when you are ready, ground yourself in the earth. You might want to accompany or accustom your ears to whatever sounds are around. If you're like me and have tinnitus, you might want to check how it's doing. And then just let it fade. It's just part of the scenery. And as you move into your heart energy, What is the ache? What is the longing? What is the yearning? What is the desire? Whatever any of those or something else that arises that wants your attention, invite it to sit in your lap and just be with one another.
If you have not already done so, do take a moment to make sure you ask the entity in your lap what they have to teach you. Make sure you thank the entity and with them in your laugh, take your dominant hand and put it over your heart and extend your other hand and let the energy of love flow through you can aim it to anyone in particular or to all. and make sure you bring that hand back over your dominant hand. So even as you are giving, you are replenishing. And when you are ready, return to the room. Thank you so much for that exquisite teaching, Sabrina. Uh, want to invite those of you who are in mourning, observing a yard site, if you're grieving for any reason or for any creature to uh, name those people uh, in the chat box. And for those of us um, not sharing names, uh, not saying Kaddish, it's an opportunity for us to practice presence for those who are support and invite those of you who are uh, in morning to rise in body or in spirit. Join me in Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Kadash, Shemay Rabbah, Biyama, Dibra, Shirte, Yamlich, Mafuke, Bechaye Kon, Amen. Amen. No, that's not cutting the grass. I know it's cutting the grass. Well, thank you so much to our teacher today, Sabrina Sojourner, joining us from Maryland, right? Yes, Bethesda. I'm still in Maryland. <laughs> okay. Thanks for sharing that beauty in, in the inner and the and the external beauty. 
Thanks to Adi Stein for handling our tech container with grace and skill. Thanks to our anonymous sponsor for today for expressing gratitude by supporting this practice, uh, which has been such a blessing for, for so many of us uh, as we move through this time. Uh, as always, you're invited to stay on for a few minutes of conversation with our teacher for today, Sabrina Sojourner, about today's teaching or to reflect on your practice for today. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. Rabbi Batsheva Meiri, who hasn't been with us for a while, will join us from Asheville, North Carolina. Another wonderful Jewish mindfulness meditation teacher will lead us tomorrow. Um, I'll lead us on Friday as we sit into Shabbat. Um, so for those who are leaving us now, I want to wish you a safe, healthy, and blessed rest of your day. And we hope to see you soon. If you do have questions for um, Sabrina, please, oops, please, <laughs> there we go. That's, now we're both there. Right. <laughs> uh, please put them in the chat box. Um, wow, Sabrina, that was really something. Um, I'm gonna try to just, uh, you, there was, you know, you, your, your drosh at the end of the, st the story. First of all, this, that story is amazing. That's an amazing story. Um, That's so why gonna, it stayed gonna, with me all these years. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna go back. Uh, I think I will revisit the recording of this to listen to that story a few times. Um, and uh, so just remind us, where, where did you hear it? And where did you get that story, first of all? Um, from the late author, Tony Cade Bambara, who you, the- uh, you put it in the, at some point, can you put it in the chat box? I don't sure. know how to spell it. Uh, and my, she has she's written many short stories and many novels. My favorite of all of her novels is The Salt Eaters. Oh, uh, yeah. And some of you may remember it from some time it was it's, uh, it's uh, some time ago, but I will put her name in the in the chat. Uh, she's a w was an amazing human being. And mm -hmm. I was very blessed to have met her in a particularly important time of my life. Did she tell you the story or is it a written story? It's a, it, as far as I, she told the story to a group of us. We had managed uh, to uh, surprise her for a birthday and it was a feat <laughs> for us to be able to do that. But we did manage to do that. And so among the things that she gave us in return was this story. Hmm. So, you know, you're unpacking at the end, the, you know, the moral of the story that if you're willing to be vulnerable, if you're willing to be open to change, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there was another piece. You, I don't know if you remember. If you something, and and uh, you're willing to trust the universe, it yes, will get willing, yeah. It will flow. It will flow through you to the ocean. Yeah. Wow. Um. Uh. So I, I guess the question I have for you, it looks like somebody. Oh, at least the salt eaters are there. But um, you're, you told it beautifully. Oh, thank story. you. So I wanted to. I don't want to get too much in our heads because I think the ult You know, ultimately, you're really about what you did was, at least for me, bring awareness to, and I hope for everyone, that this practice is really about becoming aware that there is that brook that is trying to flow through us and find its destination, right? Find fulfillment through us. Yeah. It gets, it gets blocked up, you know, it gets clogged up by, you know, you said obstructions. Um, and so the practice is really about noticing those obstructions and, you know, being open to, okay, now um, where's the wisdom that can help the, help the water find its way to where it needs to go, yeah? Yes, and and sometimes we just moved need to move a tiny branch out of its way, mm -hmm. right? yeah, and you know, and I I would in terms of working with people and my own work, fear is usually the first branch, <laughs> which can seem a lot bigger than it actually is, mm -hmm. uh, because it, uh, it it can be the fear of you know, doing it wrong, the fear of not having what you need in terms of being able to do that. Uh, it, it, it can be any of a number of different things that show up to say, oh, why do, are you even bothering with something like that? Hmm. And it's usually our, um, our, our critical self trying to, quote, trying to quote unquote protect us. And mm -hmm. 
it's really time to, at those moments, it's important to say, oh, don't worry about it. It'll all be okay. Now, I know you're trying to protect me and I, this is really what I want. I know this, I want to go for it. And as it continues to throw up, uh, it and life throw up roadblocks, it's just important to stay in conversation with the desire and with whatever shows up to block it. Yeah, but maybe you talk a little bit about, you know, the, um, there's the blockage and then there's the uh, the other creatures that come in to help out, right? The bird, yes. the, the rat, the, the bird, the bunny. Right. So what are that what are, what does that represent for you? How do you experience that? Where's who's who, what's the bird and the bunny? Well, it's actually it can and be the wind. people we yeah, and the wind and the sun. Right. And it can be any it can basically that we may not know who it is that's going to help us. Mm -hmm. And so when someone offers you a hand, instead of looking to see if there's something that's going to bite you, take the hand and see where it leads you. And mm -hmm. it may not work. I mean, I, you know, I can think of people who have offered to help and they got me a little bit further, but they didn't get me to where the, the next thing was. And as soon as I recognized that, the next thing usually occurred. And, you know, showed up with, and I also know that sometimes I'll be <laughs> out in the desert um, trying to figure out what I'm not seeing, what I'm not recognizing. And as soon as I ask that question, something arises that points me to another direction and gets me out of the desert. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a, about not, I, None of us have all the answers. So being open to the answers that show up. Mm -hmm. It's really a very, it's so, such a powerful story. Um, there was a question about um, T. Ferret and yearning. And I was wondering about that too. I don't want to get, us to, I don't know. It feels like this is so powerful. I don't want to get too much up in the head and, you know, figure out, figure it all out. Um, but you did, I did, I was curious about what you said about the difference between yearning and longing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's worth, you know, touching back on that um, uh, in terms of what that means. I guess I was feeling like the, the, the water, the brook that's rushing and trying to find its way, that's not, you know, I don't know if you meant that's, you were using that as metaphor for Netzach, that met, Netzach energy. Mm -hmm. um, and so what is T in the story and in the practice, T ferret is what? I, I mean, I, I made up my own answer to that. But <laughs> what about you? Well, well it, cer certainly the, the long, the long going, the longing for, mm -hmm. the, the yearning for ocean is uh, net sock. The mm -hmm. willingness to be transformed and all uh, the ways we need to be transformed is to ferret. Great. Okay. So when we did to ferret, um, we associated that with the, uh, the Mida of Anava, which we translated as balanced self, meaning exactly what you just said, the, the willingness to acknowledge mm -hmm. that we cannot be self-sufficient. We don't have all the answers. We are dependent on others. We have to trust our own wisdom. It's not like, not giving it all over to some to other things, uh, but that both play a role. This that yes. ourself and others play a role. There you go. That wasn't so hard. That really works. Really and good. we managed so, to not get too deep in our in the weeds of our head. <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. Okay, let me see something. Um, another question. Um, uh, can you offer some? Let's see. Ooh, here's a question. Due to recent and past events in today's meditation, I could only find flatness when I asked what my yearning is. Can you offer some verbal prompts that might invite my heart to reveal my yearnings so I don't keep settling in the desert? Ah, wow. I hear That's two things in that. One uh -huh. is I invite you to really go deep in the desert. The desert uh, has amazing cisterns and uh, kivas that, and if you can find your way to one of those in a meditation, I, that's my invitation to you is to find out what the desert is trying to offer you. And that mm -hmm. might be your ticket out of the desert. Uh, uh, because it's only when the, the brook 
um, starts getting heavy and goes through another piece of transformation that it understands that it has to, um, that it needs something different in order to go over this next hurdle. So there's something that you still need to gather. But the fact that you want to get out of the desert is the beginning of being open to whatever it is that you need to get out of the desert. Yeah, just to underscore that, that's great. And I see there's a comment that said, people say like, it's okay to be flat. Um, <laughs> yes, that's great. It's okay to be numb. It's okay to not know what's what we're feeling, you know? Um, it's just awareness yeah. of, oh, uh, I am flat, I, right? Did I freeze or did all of you freeze? Oh, no. Uh, no, maybe you froze for a sec. That's okay. The water, no, will I, get where it needs okay. To, the water will get to where it needs to go, Sabrina. Yeah, <laughs> See? yeah, exactly. So, uh, I, mean, I, I think that I think of um, at times like this, I often think of Holly Near's song, Can We Be Like Drops of Water Falling on a Stone? You know, splashing, mm. break, breaking, dispersing in air, weaker than right. the stone by far, but be aware of that as, a, as the water, con I don't remember the rest of it, but, it, 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 but that the water comes again. The walk will wear away as the water comes again. So mm, beautiful. All right. I'm going to go look that up after this too. <laughs> All right. Um, so there's a, uh, an important question. We have about three, four minutes left. And, okay. um, you know, obviously, you know, we're all have the verdict. Um, yes. Uh, and are feeling whatever the, you know, feeling all the feelings as they say. Yeah. And you also refer to that, you know, about um, kind of, I don't want to, par I don't want to, I'll paraphrase, but feel free to correct me, you know, about kind of um, there's like a blockage that's, that was, you know, opened, you know, as a result, you know, here's a release of energy from, you know, this verdict coming down, right? Yeah. And you spoke of a joy, you know, joy and, um, and sadness, right? Yes. Um, and honoring both in that way, which also feels like a little bit of T. Ferret of like, holding multiple feelings at the same time that even can be in contradiction to each other. Um, so there is a question, you know, based on, you know, on that, on that topic about how to hold on to our yearning for deep transformation and healing in the face of all the brokenness, you know, the fact that this is like, you know, this is one case, but obviously there are like a gazillion other cases. Um, uh, you know, and how do we deal with holding on to brokenness and hope and yearning in the way that you're describing? Not too big a question. <laughs> <laughs> you got two minutes. That's plenty of time. You can do it. <laughs> so, well, I would start with it, that it, it's not so much how as you just do. Mm -hmm. right? Um I, it, it, as we move into uh, next week is is your so uh, and one of the things about it in terms of being foundation is also secret mm -hmm. and so the 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 secret of the foundation is its durability and so when we we can go anywhere we want to go as far as we want to go when we know where we're anchored mm -hmm. and so it, the way to endure uh, the, the long haul is one, to be clear that I'm doing what I need to do right now. Uh, what, and sometimes what I need to do is take a break. I wanna be very clear about that. Self-care mm -hmm. is very important in, in this work. And mm -hmm. the other piece of that is to remind myself, I'm never doing this alone. I may not be able to see what everybody is doing. However, I trust. I have a, I'm not a big person on hope. I am deeply, deeply trust the arc of history and the arc of the universe. And I am certain that the, the system that we have now in this country and in most of the world is unsustainable. And I don't have to see the fruits of that. I just need to do my part whenever it arises. Well, that was pretty beautifully said. And just right. Um, oh, so Sabrina, I want to thank you, you know, for your, you know, your neshama and your presence and your wisdom as always, which I know is deeply appreciated by everybody here. And um, I'm glad we'll be 
welcoming you back. I know it's some, uh, I think the last week of the Omer, you'll be back for the week of Malchut. Yes. And uh, we'll look forward to that. So thanks again, really. Thank you. I you. thank you always for the, Mark, for the invitation. I, I love this opportunity and I also love our conversations afterwards, so. Me too, me too. Take care. All right, everyone, be well. Uh, thanks, Adi, and we hope to see